Ain't no mediocre, no, no more no mediocre, I won't hit no mediocre, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hey everybody, it's Hog Vlogs again. As the football season has come to a close, uh, we've decided to make another Hog Vlog as a season in review for Arkansas. So at the beginning of the season, me and Matthew were thinking, you know, hey, we can get at least 9, 10 wins. Okay, well, if you look at it, we could have easily gone, what, 4-8? Because you Louisiana Tech, they missed that field goal. We would have lost the game. If you don't get so lucky against TCU at the end there, we would have lost that game. Ole Miss, we got a little lucky with them again. So easily, this season could have been a whole lot worse than it turned out to be. But that's just another sign that uh, B. Lamont needs to go. So let's just get straight to the point here. What this all comes down to after another 8-5 and five season, well, 7-5, and five, we play the bowl game tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, the bowl game's tomorrow. Who knows if we're going to win that or not. I'm not going to make any predictions on that because I'm done making predictions for Arkansas football because you never know what's going to happen. But we, we're not going to win that game if we can't contain their quarterback because he's a running quarterback and they've hurt us all year. But what this comes down to... Hold up, hold up. I'm going to make a prediction on that game okay. and say their quarterback rushes for... I say 150 yards. Uh, they beat us by at least 21 points, and uh, we end the season on a high note there uh, with a big loss to Virginia Tech. All right. Prediction for Matthew. What this comes down to is Arkansas football is mediocre, and we have fans with too high of expectations, including us. Yeah. We <laughs> thought at the beginning of the year we had an opportunity to cycle up in the SEC and get to the top and beat some of the good teams like Alabama and maybe I'll shot the SEC West. But Arkansas fans, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to down your hopes a little bit. Unless we get some playmakers on both sides of the ball, we're not going anywhere. And this coach right now, Brett Bielema, I love the guy. He's a great guy, great coach, great husband. He's, he's hilarious. Actually, yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah. He's got, you know, he's got a new kid coming along. He's going to be a great dad. I love the guy. But as of right now, we don't have playmakers. And yes, we have some wide receivers that can make plays. Yes, we have Austin Allen. We have some playmakers, but they're not the guys that can just change the game in one play. If you look back, Arkansas's defense was very, very good when we had three good players. Those three players were Martrell Spate, Darius Phylon and Trey Flowers. This is my motto. If you have three good players on each side of the ball, three really good players that can make plays, that can change the game in one play, then you're set. See, but I don't see Brett Bielema bringing those guys in. He's a pretty good recruiter, but he can't compete in the SEC. As long as he's here, he's not going to bring in those players that we need to have to make the big plays and to get us to where we need to be. And I think what has really happened is Brett's such a nice guy and such a lovable guy we give him more grace, which we should give him as fans, but also we don't see a lot of the problems and issues. Our issue, we don't have a defense. Name me one player on our defense that's a good player. Brent's got to bring in some guys that can just change the game on one play. Okay, well, uh, Luke, I actually have something here for you. Huh? It's a 1994 National Championship Coke memorabilia set, and I want to talk about the 1994 championship a little, actually. It's the only championship Arkansas is ever going to have in the next century. I wasn't old enough to see this when it happened, but ask anyone in Arkansas, and they know about the shot that Scotty Thurman hit against Duke and the 1994 championship to seal the deal for Arkansas and get us the only championship we're going to have in a long time. One on the shot clock, Thurman beat it. Okay, now I actually wrote Santa Claus this year uh, a letter, oh. and it said my only wish was for Arkansas to win a dang championship in football or basketball. I'd take baseball too, but I'd rather have football or basketball. I want a major sport championship in not my track. lifetime. Not, not track. Okay, I mean, they're doing a great job with our track yeah. program, but who watches track all the time? You know, this is national televised football and basketball on ESPN, CBS, Fox Sports, for everybody to see. A track meet championship cannot bring a whole state together, but a basketball or football championship can bring a whole state together. As I was listening to Bo Mattingly the other day, he was telling about how when we won the national championship, 
it brought the whole state of Arkansas together. We had something to be proud of. We weren't just this nobody state in the middle of the country that nobody knows about. We we got our name out there, and we had something to be proud of. You know, Brett Bielma is a great recruiter. I think that he's doing a solid job with developing players, but one thing that he needs to do better, and honestly this is the biggest thing in recruiting, is you can't have misses. You can't have guys go off to different states. You can't have guys from your state leave and go somewhere else. Let's take KJ Hill for example, a guy who went to Ohio State. What was he, a four-star, five-star wide receiver? He's up there. Left the state of Arkansas and go to Ohio State. You've got to get that kid. I you got to get him. Let's have another example. This is actually recently. Malik Monk. Ooh. Left Arkansas to go to Kentucky. Now, you know, as Malik Monk, I can understand why you'd want to go to Kentucky. But as a coach, Mike Anderson, you got to sell it. Malik Monk, if he came to Arkansas, I I'm getting chills just thinking about this. He'd be averaging, what, 35, 40 points a game? He'd be averaging 35, 40. He would have been a living legend for the state of Arkansas for playing one year. If he would have come here... The whole state would have recognized it. his name. I'm not even kidding you. They probably would have made a statue. I'm not kidding. And that's the type of player that guy electrifying can jump out of the gym. You know, same thing in football. If you're if you're a really good athlete, if you're electrifying, you can change the game. You can change the turn of the tide. You can bring momentum to the game, and things like that with Malik Monk. If you have Malik Monk here, he's the type of guy that can help you make a nice champ. You know, a tournament run. In the NCAA tournament. Now, Arkansas is not a state like Texas is where we have talent around the corner. We have a couple guys every year that we have to get because we don't have the talent like Texas or Florida does where there are guys every 50 feet that are the big, big playmakers. So when you have a four or five star that's interested in you, they're from the state of Arkansas, you've got to get them. So, Brett Bielema, here's my challenge to you. Get some playmakers. Get a superstar. Get somebody who's just gonna, you know, electrifying spin move, juke move, jumps, you know, over a defender. People don't realize that's big. That is big time. You bring the crowd into it, you get the players pumped up, it makes it elevates everybody else. Hustle plays, anything. So let's talk a little bit about the season. We're just gonna go through a few different uh, accolades that we're gonna give out for the year for me and Matthew. Let's start with best play of the year. What do you think? It's got to be uh, the TCU. What was it the two-point conversion we got against them? Yeah, to tie it with, yeah. with 40-something seconds left. They did a double reverse, and then Keon Hatcher came left, threw his left hand to Austin Allen in the end zone. Reverse! To pass! Allen! We were actually at the oh, game. Oh, man. If you've seen it from our other hog vlog, you can go check that out. Actually, I'll put the link in the description. But that happened, and me and Matthew just about fell off the top. We were oh, yeah. up in the nose, but we just about fell off the railing because it just oh, everyone was everybody was around. going everybody was going nuts, and the TCU fans just couldn't believe it. Another play that was a really good play was when Austin Allen fought in the end zone for the game-winning touchdown. But I'd almost give the two-point conversion a little step ahead of that because the game was on the line and they tied it up, and it was a double reverse. It was exciting with Austin Allen. You know, he just got kind of got pushed in the end zone, which is great and won the game. It was dramatic, but the two-point conversion just shocked everybody. Everybody thought TCU had the game won. All right, Matthew, let's give out our MVP award. Who do you think should win the MVP for Arkansas? Okay, there's really only one option, and that's going to be Austin Allen before yeah. he got hurt, which I'm surprised he didn't get hurt earlier in the season because this guy stood in there and got hit after hit after hit, and they were hard. But this guy, he toughed it out all season. We wouldn't have the record that we do, even though it's not very good without him. This guy, he made the plays when it mattered. I agree. He really made plays in the clutch situations and honestly he could be a really good player for us next year as quarterback but the one thing we need is for that offensive line to protect him. Alright and another thing that I really think was shocking to many people especially around you know Arkansas and around the country this team this year did not have an identity. Usually, Brett Bielema is ground and pound out of the big running backs like he used to have at Wisconsin, Monte Ball, James White. He had a stable of running backs, big offensive linemen like Cons and all those guys. You know, this year, Arkansas, we had a nice running back in Raleigh Williams. He rushed for 1,300-something you know, yards. But overall, we didn't have that ground and pound like we used to. We were, let's just be honest here, we were a passing we team were. this year. Yeah. 
We were a passing team this year, and I'm fine with passing the ball around, but I want Brett Bielema to have that identity. You know, I want there to be a certain identity that we know what we're going to do. This year was honestly just a weird year to me. I mean, it was like win one, lose one, oh, win yeah. one, lose one for what, you know, nine games straight. It was just an odd year. I'm hoping the next year can be better. I'm hoping that we can bring in some good players, bring in some guys who can just change the game, especially on defense. We need some defensive players. I think we've got some that are talented, that are freshmen this year, that they redshirted. Yeah, that defense is the main thing that we need to fix for next year. All right, so let's talk a little bit about bowl games since it's bowl season. Okay. So recently, Leonard Fournette and Christian McCaffrey both announced that they won't be playing in their bowl games this year. What do you think about that, Matthew? Uh, I think it's great for them because if you're going into the NFL where you're going to get paid to play, why would you risk getting injured in a game that doesn't matter at all when you're going into something where you're getting paid to play football and your body is the only thing you have to get paid and you got to keep it healthy? Why would you risk getting hurt? Yeah, I agree with Matthew on this. A lot of people would disagree on me and say it's giving up on your team. I used to be one of those people back then that thought, hey, you know, if you're skipping out of the bowl game because you want to go to the NFL draft and stay healthy, I think it's honestly giving up your team. I used to think that, but last year this all changed for me. In a bowl game last year, Notre Dame had a defensive player named Jalen Smith who was a top five draft pick, was projected to actually go to the Cowboys instead of Ezekiel Elliott, and he tore up every ligament in his knee, and he lost, I mean, he, I don't even think he's on an NFL team now. I don't think he barely even got drafted. You gotta realize for some kids, this is their only opportunity, and they can make a lot of money, and if you're gonna risk that in a bowl game, I don't think it's honestly worth it. So I respect, Fournette and McCaffrey's decision. I think it's a different deal if you're a quarterback and you're the leader of a team and you're the only thing that the team has. But with LSU, they can replace Len Fournette with Darius Geis. He's really good. He actually tore Arkansas up for 260 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, why are these bowl games going to matter? Besides the New Year's Six Bowl If games, you're not in the playoffs, yeah. what are you playing for? What are you playing for? It's just... Two teams getting together with a sponsor like the Belk Bowl, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Just a sponsor makes money and, you know, the schools make a little money. But, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yes, some small schools that don't get to travel a lot, you know, they don't get to stay in nice places or play a nice stadium. Yes, the small schools that are 6-6, six and 7-5 six, get to go to a big bowl game. That's big for them. But these bigger schools, it's just like, what does a bowl game matter? Now, some will argue that uh, it'll give you momentum going into the next season. What, what do you think about that? I mean, it depends on the bowl game. If you're playing in a big bowl game, like the National Championship, of course, or a Sugar Bowl, the Orange Bowl, and you win it, and you go in the next season with players coming back, yes, it causes some momentum. But honestly, a lot of that momentum is just hype from media and you know certain sources and people. And honestly, it's it's all just a bunch of talk. We don't really know who's going to be good the year before. Did we know Washington was going to be no. the number four team in the country this year? Do we have any idea about that? Do we know Texas a and was going to start 8-0 on the season? Do we know Lamar Jackson was going to win the Heisman? I mean, yes, we knew he was a good player. Do we know he's going to be video game-like good? I mean, this guy is like, you know, he's the guy where you turn up all the sliders in 99 on the NCAA football and he just runs around. So there's a lot of unknowns before a season, and a lot of it's all just talk. And, you know, all that hype stuff, I don't think it really matters. What, comes down, what it comes down to is when both teams meet on the field, whoever wins the football game. That's what it comes down to, wins and losses. I think Ohio State has proved himself this year. They've had a really tough schedule with a bunch of ranked opponents. Uh, Clemson, I've always thought they were overrated. I've never thought much of Clemson, but uh, their quarterback, he's pretty good. Watson, he's going to put up a fight against Ohio State, but I'm a little Ohio State fan myself, not a bandwagoner. But uh, I'm, I'm going to bet uh, 35 to 31 Ohio State. Hey, yeah, Matthew, stand up and show them your sweats, actually. Okay, uh, here you can take these. Right here, I got the Ohio State uh, emblem here. Uh, Luke actually bought these for me. I'm repping my school, though, aside from Arkansas. Once again, the link to the TCU hog vlog is in the description. Go ahead and check that out. Also, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. See y'all later. Ain't no mediocre, no, no more no mediocre. I won't hit no mediocre.